Welcome to Your Healthy Kitchen from YRMC. Welcome to Your Healthy Kitchen. I'm your host, Rita Carey Rubin. And we're all about school gardens, kids, and cooking healthy food today. Really fun stuff. And I'm so pleased to welcome a very special guest. Elena Greenberg is a creative and passionate food court service member who works with our local schools and community to connect kids with healthy food. Welcome, Elena. Thanks for having me, Rita. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> so good to see you. You too. Um, so when you, you know, when you go to the food court website, um, the, the, the home page, there's yeah. this big banner on the top of the page. And, and the first thing you see is it says, every school, a healthy school, every child well-nourished, eating healthy, and ready to learn. Mm -hmm. And that is such exciting stuff. Tell us, yeah, tell us a little bit about Food Corps mission in, in communities around the country. Yeah, so Food Corps is a nationwide team of AmeriCorps service members who serve in high need schools to connect kids to healthy foods. And they do the threefold, so with healthy school meals, um, a school wide culture of health, and hands on lessons. Um, so it's around the country and it's really fun to be able to do this here in Prescott. Yeah, and yeah. it's in every state in the country or just about 18, 18 states. states. So that's yeah. quite a few. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and all in high needs communities. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Prescott is one of those. It is. Yeah. 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 Well, tell us a little bit about some of the some of the projects that you do with the kids in our community. So here in Prescott, I work with three schools, um, Lincoln Elementary, Taylor Hicks Elementary, and Granite Mountain School. Um, and at all three schools, we've built new school gardens for these students, um, which is really great. And the after-school garden program is able to use these gardens to grow their own food. That is so yeah. exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and last year, I had the opportunity to work with you with the Granite Mountain School kids mm -hmm. and with their cooking club. That's, an, that's one of the things you do with, yes. with all the schools or just with Granite Mountain? Just Granite just Mountain. Just Granite Mountain. Yeah. Yeah, and that was so fun. We, we were there uh, helping to teach the kids knife skills mm -hmm. and chopping up a ve bunch of veggies that they were going to roast. And I was so impressed with the kids because we were chopping up things like beets and and butternut squash and turnips and you know, things mm -hmm. that you wouldn't know, typically think are kids' food. Mm -hmm. um, but they they were so excited and they wanted to try the food before it was roasted, to try it raw. Yeah. And you know, I don't think I was that adventurous when I was a kid. Right. Um, right. I may have been. I, I don't remember, <laughs> but, but but we always had a garden. My parents always had a garden, so I think that really helped. I think so yeah. too. Yeah, when they're able to plant the seed and watch it grow, and then be able to harvest it and see the whole process, yeah. really encourages them to try new things. Yeah. 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 And then you've you've seen that as mm -hmm. things come out of the gardens and the schools, they're yeah. willing to sample things that are a little unusual. Yeah, I've been really impressed with yeah. the kids, and they've been really brave in trying new fruits <laughs> and vegetables. It's <laughs> the weirdest one they tried? Uh, we did turnips. We oh. did a, so October's Farm to School Month uh -huh. and we gave every student in these three schools a turnip oh. to try and uh, most of them actually liked it. They did? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's really good. Good for them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make a really easy recipe that you introduced to me. Um, it comes from the Whipstone Farm website, whipstonefarm.com, mm -hmm. and it's one of Shanti Raid's recipes and um, super simple crock pot kidney bean, sweet potato, chili, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, this would be so simple for kids, wouldn't it? I think so. Super family friendly and mm -hmm. easy to do. Yeah, and really inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And um, so it involves um, chopping up an onion, mm -hmm. a bell pepper, a couple of sweet potatoes, uh, a chili, or if you have chili powder, the recipe mm -hmm. said to use chili powder. Um, we had a couple kinds of chili, actually. There's chipotle, um, which is a... Uh, Roasted jalapeno, is that it? Yeah, it's a really rich flavor. Yeah, mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful yeah. chili. Uh, smoked paprika and some garlic, some orange juice and kidney beans. I think that's it. And we'll top it off with a little cilantro and avocado. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, <laughs> yeah, if you wouldn't mind um, starting to chop up those those uh, sweet potatoes. I think Shanti recommended you know chopping them at like a half inch dice or something like that. Um, and I'll chop up this onion. Have the kids worked with onions much? How are they? Um, how do they handle chopping <laughs> up an onion? They uh, decided to wear goggles. They did <laughs> last time they we did. were chopping onions. Uh huh. Yeah, it was funny to watch. So they were just <laughs> preparing for the tears. <laughs> yeah, you know, I used to work in restaurants, and I used to do that too. So. <laughs> 
Well, Lena, what inspired you to become a Food Corps service member? Um, you know, my cousin Emily introduced me to Food Corps when she was a service member up in Tillamook, Oregon. Um, and she was doing that while I was in college. Uh -huh. um, and so while I was in college, I was also inspired because I started this program called the Food Recovery Network, um, which introduced me to hunger on college campuses and around the community. Um, so what we did is we took food that was normally thrown away in the school cafeteria and donated it to the local food banks. Um, and so this really made the connection for me between hunger and food waste and little acts you can do to help your community. Well, that's fantastic. Is that a program that was just in in Oregon locally, or is it also? Uh, no, it's actually a nationwide program, it and it's uh, spearheaded by college students who want to make little differences in their community. Oh, yeah. man, that is, that's, that's really admirable. And, um, and that was something that you joined when you were in college. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's such good work. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about some of the projects that you've, you've done with kids in our community. Um, so since September 2015, when I started as a Food Corps service member here, we built three new school gardens. That's, um, that. that's so exciting. Yeah, um, and since there are a lot of animals in the Prescott area, we also built a new fence for the uh, garden at Granite Mountain School to keep those pesky javelina out. Javelina. Yes, and we've also done um, school-wide composting programs. So we built um, new composts at Granite Mountain and at Lincoln, and having been encouraging the kids to bring in their apple cores and uh, banana peels to add to the compost. Oh, and, cool. Yeah, create nutrient-rich soil for the garden. That's awesome. And, and do the does the cafeteria recycle um, compost as well, their scraps? You know, that's one of my goals for this year. Um, the cafeteria staff are all on board, and they're really excited to encourage the kids to uh, find a new method for their uh, food waste. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling the effects of this onion. <laughs> I need those goggles. <laughs> um, well, how, so you have the kids, um, you know, you're introducing them to new foods, new, new fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. things from the garden. Um, you've got your gardens and your, your gardening clubs and your cooking clubs. So how do you, how do you measure the, your impact? So how do you, um, how do you see how your activities and things affect kids' mm -hmm. food choices? Well, Food Corps is all about measuring progress. Um, so we're really lucky this year to have uh, what's called a healthy school toolkit for every school that I'm working with. Um, and this is a tool that brings together parents, teachers, community members, um, cafeteria staff, all together in one room um, to talk about their goals for their garden and to make their school a healthy school. Um, and so at the end of the year, we look at these goals and see how much progress we've made. Um, we also do weekly reporting and reflection logs, which allows me to document cute kid quotes, um, how many students I'm able to bring out to the garden, uh, how many more teachers are getting invested in the garden, uh, lots of things like that. Well, that's very uh, exciting, and, yeah. and you really involve the whole community. Definitely. The schools and the parents and the kids and yeah. all, the, all the stakeholders, as they say. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, I think there's a relationship between Food Corps and the Prescott Farmers Market, right? There so, is. So what is that relationship? So uh, Food Corps is hosted by a site. Uh, wherever there's a service member, there's a host. So uh -huh. my host is the Prescott Farmers Market. Um, so I'm able to work with the farmers um, that I have a relationship with there um, to bring their produce to the cafeterias. It's a really nice or good host to have. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely feeds into that whole, the whole purpose. And mm -hmm. have, have you been able to bring food from local farms into the schools? Yeah. Um, last year, I was able to serve over 8,000 kids uh, local produce Seriously? from farms in Yavapai County. Wow. Yeah, yeah I know that's a big number. <laughs> that is huge. <laughs> that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you're doing such wonderful things. How do you, oh, you know what? Before I ask you that, there are some. There's a couple really cool things happening with the farmers market. There is. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about. Tell us about them. Uh, so the farmers market is now transitioning to the winter market, where we will be hosted by YRMC. Uh, right next to the YMCA on Division Street. Um, so that'll be every Saturday starting at new hours from 10 to 1. 
Great. Um, and then we're also expanding to Prescott Valley. So now there will be a farmer's market at the Harkins Theater parking lot on Tuesdays from 3 to 6 p.m. Uh-huh. Um, and then one more thing that I think is really exciting for the families that I work with is this program called Double Up Food Bucks. Yes, uh, tell so about that. That's exciting. When you uh, use your EBT card or your food stamps at the farmer's market and say you spend $10 in your EBT, um, you will get an additional $10 from the market to spend on fruits and vegetables. So it's really a, a big bonus to go to the farmer's market and get some extra money to spend on these beautiful and delicious vegetables. Sure, that's yeah. a huge uh, saving. So that basically you get, um, get to double your money. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What a wonderful yeah. program. Mm -hmm. um, Alina, let's start throwing some things in that sure. crock pot. Sure. All right, Sounds I'm gonna good. hand you some stuff. So we've okay. got the kidney beans. Okay. Just a, a can of regular old kidney beans. And there's a very large, um, very potent onion, <laughs> so that goes in there, and um, so a bell pepper. And what's so cool about this recipe is there's no preparation other than chopping, and uh, yeah, no sautéing of anything. And you can dump your potatoes. The sweet, there's two sweet potatoes, and that that chili. And one thing about this recipe I noticed because I've made it a couple times is it is a little spicy, and. Um, you know, Cory and Shanti are famous for their chili. So, um, so for kids, it might be an idea to maybe um, tone down the spice just a little bit. Would you think? Yeah, I think it's pretty easy to adjust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you maybe only put on one one type of chili or a little bit less, because the recipe calls for. I'll let you do this. About a teaspoon of chipotle. And a teaspoon. Of smoked paprika it smells That's so good. good. Isn't that great? <laughs> and then there's that other chili in there. So there's there's some heat. And uh, there's a couple cloves of garlic. I'll have you throw that in there. And some orange juice, about a half a cup. And a cup of water. All right. And that's it. Yeah, easy peasy, and it cooks. I cooked it on high. Um, it cooked in about four hours. Mm -hmm. I guess if you put it on low, um, it would take about six to eight. Maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Yeah. So tell us, how are you going to carry your experience with Food Corps into the future? Food Corps has taught me a lot about how to be a good leader, um, but it's also really taught me about the importance of working together with community in order to make real change. So although I don't know exactly where I'm going, whether that means teaching or working with nonprofits, um, but I know that I'm very passionate about food justice and hunger relief um, and doing boots on the ground, hands-on learning. Yeah, so it's yeah. important work these days. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun too. Well, if somebody um, wants to get involved with Food Corps, they want to either support it in some way or become a Food, serv food Corps service member, um, how would they do that? So you can easily go to Food Corps' website at foodcorps.org, uh -huh. um, check out the application. It'll be opening in January. Uh, or you can email me directly if you want to volunteer with me in my garden clubs um, at elena.greenberg at foodcorps.org. Elena.greenberg at foodcorps.org. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> and most Food Corps service members do two years? That's a typical? Um, the requirement is one year, That's but fine. I decided that I was so invested in this community to do two years. No, we're so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so it'll take a while for our chili to cook, but the finished product is so pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? It is. Lots of colors. Lots of color. Really good fall colors, right? Mm -hmm. You always so tell your kids to eat the rainbow. Yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. Yeah, isn't that perfect? So, um, so really nice, um, served with a little cilantro and some avocado maybe. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Yeah. I put a lot of avocado on mine because mine was really spicy. <laughs> So, Leah, thank you so much for joining us. It's just been a pleasure. It's and, been so much fun. Yeah, and I know you're just <laughs> having such a wonderful impact on so many children's lives and their families. And, um, and I really wish you every success with what you have left, your time left here, which is, ends in July mm -hmm. next year. Yeah. And, um, and good luck in the future. And we have thank you. a t-shirt for you, Oh. <laughs> the official Your Healthy oh Kitchen t-shirt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Rita. Yeah. And thanks to all of you for joining us in your healthy kitchen. Remember, you can watch all of our videos, plus access all of our recipes at yrmchealthconnect.org.
Just scroll down the page and click, click on the link to Your Healthy Kitchen. We've made 27 videos so far and a bunch of fun segments with Sandy Moss on the Morning Scramble and her new show, Sandy and Friends. So be sure to check them all out. And you can also join us on Facebook. Join our group page at Your Healthy Kitchen with Rita Carey Rubin, and you'll see what I am making in my kitchen at home, get insider tips and recipes, and find great links to interesting news, websites, and videos about healthy food and cooking. So until next time, stop by the Prescott Farmer's Market Education Booth to say hello to Elena, and buy some sweet potatoes while you're there, and try this awesome chili recipe that is so easy and delicious. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.